Good afternoon, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, also the Earthly Mother, the Holy Spirit. Okay, I pray that they bless this lesson today and that we get some more uh, knowledge and understanding of the times that we're living in and the things that are surely to come on this world in a very short amount of time. Today, you know, I want to kind of talk about a couple of things. And, uh, I'm probably going to title this one, Who Has the Keys to Heaven? Because uh, that's really the basis of everything, you know, in this world right now, is who has the authority and who has the keys to heaven? Who has been shown the pathway to the Most High? And that's something that um, I think a lot of people don't really ponder. They just accept what they've been told. And I was guilty of that before I came into the truth, before the Most High woke me up. You know, I assumed that the churches had the pathway to heaven. And that if we didn't follow the ways <clears throat> that the churches told us to, um, we couldn't make it to heaven. That the only way to serve the Most High is to follow the things that they have laid down, such as Sunday worship, Cesare worship or, you know, Mary worship, praying to different saints, uh, Easter, Christmas, you know, the holidays of the, uh, of the land here, you know, being a good uh, citizen of, to the country that you are born into, that those are all the ways to uh, heaven, you know, but ultimately, you know, when, and, and that's probably why they, they don't really go into the scriptures because the scriptures tell you, you know, who, which people actually the Most High is dealing with and the ones that actually have been shown the proper way that the Most High wants to be worshipped here. But other people have kind of have hijacked that, uh, that station in life and have just appointed themselves into that kind of a station at this point and saying that they're the only ones that can actually uh, guide you to the Most High. But ultimately, the Most High is the one who will decide who makes it in. No one here does. No one here has the correct pathway, you know, except to the, the people that the Most High is dealing with here. And, you know, as, over these last few years, you know, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube, watch a lot, read a lot of books and things like that. And you get partial truths, but, it's, uh, but without the guidance of the Holy Spirit being sent to you, or myself, um, is it, it's impossible to know the way to the Most High. So sometimes, you know, and it's amazing because right now, everyone's, for all, from the Christian perspective, is looking for the rapture. They're looking for the dates for the rapture, the possible time for the rapture of the church. And it's like, it's amazing that they will refuse to even acknowledge who the most high's true children are and i mean it's 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 absolutely amazing as soon as you you know you, some people are i mean i've come across a really really intelligent really smart people in their field of work and whatever it is but as soon as you bring up the bible as soon as you bring up you know who his, his true people are you know common sense just goes out the window and it's just amazing to see that you know, but the most high, ultimately, the people that are going to be saved are the ones that the most high knew from the beginning, the ones that were already in the upper aeons and were sent down here. And ultimately, the ones that were already with him, his children that were already up there with him in the upper aeons, were sent down here, okay, in order to experience ignorance. And that's exactly what we are experiencing here in this reality. We are experiencing ignorance. And I kind of want to read something. It's from the uh, Tripartite Tractate. And uh, I know some people were asking me to put up things so they can follow along and stuff like that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll just tell you the name of the book and then I'll expect you, if you want to know more, go read the book. Instead of me just giving you the one page, go read the whole book so you can get the whole context of what's going on. 
Okay. Cause I mean, a lot of these books, you need to read the entire book in order to understand. Yeah. I might bring out a couple scriptures here, a couple scriptures there, you know, or a paragraph here, a paragraph there. But if you want to get a good understanding, go and study it for yourself. I mean, I could easily put up all the different pages, all the page numbers, things like that, all the books, things like that. But I'm trying to get you to go out and put forth a little bit of effort and to study the stuff on your own. Not just a little piece of it here, a little piece of it there, but read it all. Because ultimately, you know, if you want to, um, you know, get out of ignorance, you have to read and you have to study and you have to pray that the Holy Spirit is sent to you in order to guide understanding and to give a deeper understanding. And sometimes you have to read things multiple times. You know, might, you might read something 50 times, 75 times, 100 times. But that 101st time you read that same passage was when the Most High will give you that understanding. Okay, but let me read this from the tripartite tractate. This is out of the Nag Hammadi. Now, the father knew him in advance since he existed in his deliberations before anything had yet come into being, where he also had the ones for whom he revealed him. He laid the deficiency upon that which lasts for limited periods of time for the glory of his fullness. Okay, so this deficiency, this deficient status that we are in is only for a limited period of time. Okay, and, it's, and this really is only for the benefit of the ones from the fullness, because ultimately this is all this whole area, this whole time period is only set up for our people to experience ignorance for a time. And then everything is going to revert back to its original status. Let me continue. It is the fact that he was unknown that made it possible for him to show his benevolence by making himself known. And thus, receiving knowledge about him is a manifestation of his generosity and the revelation of his abundant sweetness, which is the second glory. Consequently, in this way, he is, in fact, the cause of ignorance as well as the originator of knowledge. Okay? Now, when you read something like this, this goes with, um, let's get this, because he's the one that causes ignorance. That's the Most High. Most High is the cause of ignorance as well as the originator of knowledge. He does both. He dictates who's going to remain ignorant and who's going to get knowledge. But let's get that out of the scriptures. Let's go to uh, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 11. Uh, and for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So he's the one, the Most High is the one that dictates, you know, who's going to be blinded, who's going to get understanding, okay? He's the one that dictates all that. So it's not like you get to choose Jesus, and all of a sudden he's going to just open up your eyes and give you everything. He had to be chosen by the Most High, okay? And he'll dictate who stays in ignorance and who's the one that's going to receive knowledge, okay? So really, ultimately, the person who has the keys to the heaven is the Most High, and the people that he's dealing with are the ones that he's taken out of ignorance. And he's given deeper knowledge and understanding to. Okay. You know, I want to kind of talk about something. Now. I actually showed my family the other day. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's, um, it's all over like the um, social media. It's like this rap song. And it's a white guy who's wearing like a great Make America Great Again hat. And a black dude with like a, you know. And they're kind of going back and forth, you know. The black guy goes first and he talks about all the negative stereotypes of black people, you know, and what they call themselves and this, 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 and that, and you know, how they're lazy and they don't want to work. And if they acted right, they wouldn't get shot, wouldn't get put in jail, things like that. The typical things, you know, that you hear from the other nations. And then, you know, the black dude gets up and kind of goes all off on the white guy and all the things that he's done. But what's funny is this, at the end, the white guy stands up spreads his arms out 
So the black dude will come in and give him a hug. So at the end of this, you know, they're going back and forth. You know, the white guy just, you know, says, I want to just know what, what it is that you're thinking. So, you know, when the black guy tells them what he's thinking, they just stand up, hug, and like everything's good now. But see, this is what happens when, you know, the other nations and the Gentiles have been allowed to be the ones to dictate um, how forgiveness is supposed to be meted out. Okay? How revenge is supposed to be meted out to other people. Okay? See, the Most High, that's not, that's not biblical at all. If people think that you're going to treat God's chosen people wrong for hundreds and hundreds of years here in Babylon, and then all you have to do is say, hey, I acknowledge that you, you know, you've had it rough. I see your perspective. Now can we all be friends? That's not, that's not what's going to happen. And the Most High has made, has made that known. It's not, that's not what's going to happen. Okay? And the thing is, is that when I read other scriptures, it talks about how, you know, if you don't show mercy, don't expect to receive mercy. Now, when, you know, people, Hebrews break their laws, you know, they're usually, you know, given the full extent of whatever punishment, you know, there's no mercy. So then what makes people think that after you treat a certain people this way for such a long time, that all you've got to do is say, I'm sorry, and then you're good. The Most High is looking at how you treat his people. And how you treat his people is how you're going to be treated. Really simple. Okay? But like, you know, but like I said, we're here and we're experiencing these pains and this ignorance here only for a short amount of time. But, you know, if you look around right now, everywhere we look, there's nothing but ignorance. Just ignorance everywhere, you know, even on the videos, even people who kind of, you know, display some knowledge of scriptures, but then they go off with the, you know, rapture doctrine and we're just waiting to be raptured out of here. I was like, how do you think you're going to get raptured out of the mess your people made? If you made the mess, what makes you think then the most high is just going to let you just walk on out and not have to experience the pains of the mess that you made? Our people messed up. But it was set up this way because we were given trap laws that binded us. And that we were, it was already predetermined that we were not going to be able to keep the laws and that we were going to go into servitude. Because that's the way the Most High set it up. They were called stem laws. Stem laws that were impossible for us to keep that were going to bind us, okay? And that we were going to have to go into servitude. And that's exactly what's happened. But what happens is now all of a sudden, you know, yeah, the scriptures say that, but it also talks about at the end, he's going to bring us out of that ignorance that we were going to be put in, and he's going to rejuvenate our minds, okay, which is what you've been seeing for the last few years, okay? And that's why it's so impossible, like, if you really think about it, if you look at the, if you look at YouTube, you look at the videos, you know, it's really, it's impossible to get the knowledge, understanding without the Holy Spirit guiding you, you know, because I've been led astray with watching certain videos at times and thinking that things make a lot of sense. But then when things don't happen the way that we hope or the way that they think or the way that they say, or the way that, you know, we hope things happen, you have to go back and you have to reassess, you know, well, what about this knowledge? What is wrong with the knowledge that I'm getting? And really that's what we were here to do is you trust, you know, when things don't work out, reassess study more but a lot of people when things don't happen the way they want they just quit and they go back into the world but what we should be doing is studying harder studying more looking more in depth maybe there's something that i missed somewhere else why is it the most high isn't you know manifesting the way that we think that he should because his ways are of course way above our ways okay but you know what you've got to understand though is that these people that we're getting a lot of this information from, they have no knowledge and understanding. They are in complete darkness. And we look to these people because we've been conditioned to look to the Gentiles to give us some knowledge, understanding, and some stability. But once you've been, oh, your eyes are opened by the Most High, you realize that you can't get anything from them because the Most High hasn't given them any knowledge and understanding. And they have no capacity to be persuaded. 
I'm going to read that really quick here. Um, let me get this really quick here. Let me find my book. Got so many books here. All right. Here we go. This is from the Treatise of Resurrection, a lot of the Law Scriptures book. Okay. It says, uh, Treatise of the Resurrection. It says, but if there is one who does not believe, he does not have the capacity to be persuaded. For it is the domain of faith, my son, and not that which belongs to persuasion. You cannot persuade people to believe the truth because the most high, if he doesn't give it to them, he just blinds them. Understand that? You guys get that? You know, and these, these concepts are in the scriptures. Um, let's get this really quick here. Ecclesiastes 1 and 15. That which is crooked cannot be made straight and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. If it was born a certain way, if it was made a certain way, if his spirit comes from a certain place, that's just the way that, that that person is. And there's no way to fix it. Let's read this from Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. The wicked cannot be persuaded to believe the truth. So where we err is we go to the wicked looking for truth. And it's not in them to give us the truth. That's why it's so important that we learn how to pray to our earthly mother, the Holy Spirit, and ask for guidance and understanding. Because that she's been sent to us to give us knowledge, understanding, to bring things back into our remembrance. You read that in John 14. Okay, that's what she's been sent for, to give us knowledge and understanding. Pray that the Most High sends the angels to us to give us knowledge, understanding, and to give us direction. The angels are a huge part of, of our spiritual lives that has been uh, totally neglected. But if you look in the scriptures, angels were constantly visiting people and giving them knowledge, giving them understanding all the time. But we have to know how to get back into, you know, getting in contact with the angels. The angels are sent to do, they have certain jobs. Okay, and there's angels of the Most High, and there's also angels of the Holy Spirit. And you have to know how to um, invoke them, communicate with them, talk with them. But see, these are other books that have been hidden from our people because they know how important it is for us to be able to do that. But that kind of um, information has been hidden. Okay, let me read something here out of the Gospel of Mary talking about ignorance. This comes from the Gospel of Mary. The soul answered and said, what binds me has been slain and what surrounds me has been overcome and my desire has been en ended and ignorance has died. You see, ignorance is, is what surrounds us, okay? We have to overcome ignorance. We have to understand that the people that have been set up above us are ignorant and that those and going chasing after them to give us knowledge or direction is futile because they don't have it. Okay. And I used to watch, you know, a lot of videos and I still do. I still watch videos and like that, but I've learned now to kind of take a lot of things that they say with a grain of salt, you know, because now I've understand that, you know, I used to think how is these nations can be this devoid of understanding? How is it the things that are like so clear to us, they have no, they, they just cannot even grasp those concepts, but that's all the most high. Okay. You know, and it's like I said, uh, the church, uh, like I said, you start seeing like the church wants to be, the, the people who go to churches want to be taken away from this hell, but they will not admit that, you know, his chosen people have been, you know, treated wrong and that they're going to need to be um, <clears throat> reborn and put back in their land, you know, in order for the, the world to be renewed. But they just skip all of that, you know, they just want to be just taken away. But what's, what's happened is that the Pharisees and the scribes have taken away the keys of knowledge. And the Pharisees and scribes, of course, are the people of this world who have been put above us. 
And that's talked about also here in the Gospel of Thomas. Let me get that real quick. Let's see here. Here we go, Gospel of Thomas. Yahweh I said, the Pharisees and the scribes have taken away, have taken the keys of knowledge, the gnosis, and hidden them. They themselves have not entered, nor have they allowed uh, to enter those who wish to. You, however, be as wise as serpents and as innocent as, as doves. Now, those, these scribes and Pharisees are back there, you know, these are referring to the people who have been put up in high positions. Okay, they can be priests, pastors, okay, any people at this time who've been put up in high positions. And what have they done? They've taken the keys of knowledge or the gnosis and hidden them. They themselves have not entered, nor have they allowed to enter those who wish to. So because they can't enter, they're not going to allow anyone else to enter. Okay, so that's what's been going on. All right. And let's read something here out of the Wisdom of Solomon that kind of goes along with this concept. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter, let's see here. Let me get my book open here. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verses uh, 21 and 22. Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness hath blinded them. As for the mysteries of the Most High, they knew them not, neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for blameless souls. So as you can see, as for the mysteries of the Most High, they knew them not. So these people that we have given um, authority over our lives, they don't have knowledge and understanding. They don't know the mysteries of the Most High. The whole world goes about in deceit. And, you know, I've had to learn this through you know, when I, I think a certain thing's going to happen and I realize, okay, that doesn't happen that way. It's not working that way. And I look at their video, I look at people's videos or look at things that they say when I talk to people and it's like, man, you know, what, what is it? How are they doing it on purpose? And I come to the conclusion, you know what? They're not even doing it on purpose. That's just the most high, just blinding. Now I'm just watching people just being blinded by the most high. But let me talk, show you guys real quick about how the whole world goes about in deceit. Let me see here. Let's go this to uh, Sylvanus. This is uh, and this is from the book of uh, this is from the Nag Hammadi, the teaching of the teachings of Sylvanus. Entrust yourself to the Most High alone, both as father and as friend, for everyone goes about in deceit. The whole earth is full of suffering and pain, things in which there is no profit. If you wish to lead your life in tranquility, do not keep company with anyone. Even if you do keep company with them, be as if you do not. Be pleasing to the Most High, and you will not need anyone. So it's kind of showing you that, you know, the whole world is in deceit. The whole world is in ignorance. And that the only way you can get knowledge and understanding is if the Most High chooses to give it to you. I used to think a lot of people were just doing these things on purpose. They were just, you know, ignoring the, the facts on purpose because they just didn't want to see it. But now I'm understanding that that's just the most high and how he has made them. And that they're just incapable of understanding the truth. And not until the end will the most high open their eyes and then they will see the truth. But that's on the most high's time and on his terms. Okay. And the whole thing about us coming and experiencing um, ignorance, I want to read to you guys something from the Psalms. Of Solomon, you see these a lot of these books, these other books that you have probably not been exposed to. Um, they bring the story together. Okay, this is from the Psalms of Solomon, uh, probably chapter sixteen. It's called a hymn of Solomon for help for the devout. When my soul slumbered, I was far away from the Most High, wretched for a time. I sank into sleep far from the Most High. For a moment, my soul was poured out to death. I was near the gates of Hades with a sinner. Thus, my soul was drawn away from the Most High God of Israel. Okay. Unless the Lord had come to my aid with his everlasting mercy. Okay. He jabbed me as a horse is goaded 
to keep it awake. My Savior and Protector at all times saved me. I will give thanks to you, O God, who came to my aid for my salvation and who did not count me with the sinners for my destruction. Do not take your mercy away from me, O God, nor your memory from my heart until death. Okay? So for a time, we're going to be experiencing ignorance. And the Most High is going to wake us up. But he's been there the whole time, goading us and waking us up so we don't fall too far into sin. Okay? So he can bring us back. Okay? And, you know, this is the kinds of things that, you know, Hamashiach was sent to give us knowledge and understanding. See, the churches oversimplify things and make it sound like, oh, he only came to die for the sins of the world. And that was it. But he had other, another mission besides that. I'm going to read that really quick. This is from the uh, Origins of the World. Origins of the World. Also in another book from the Nag Hammadi, page 201. get this real quick here we go let me see here it says uh they already are kings they are the immortal within the mortal and they will condemn the gods of chaos and their powers it says after hamashiach the word comes and speaks of disclosing what is hidden and at the end times approach all that is dark and deficient in the universe will be undone and the cosmic structure of the creator and his powers will collapse the light will overcome the darkness and banish it the darkness will be like something that had never was and the source of darkness will be dissolved Okay, let me read that part again about Hamashiach. After Hamashiach, Yahweh the word comes and speaks of disclosing what is hidden and the end times approach. All that is dark and deficient in the universe will be undone. So he comes to bring knowledge and understanding to the little ones who were in darkness and in ignorance. And they might not, and then this is, and then at the end times is when they're going to get the knowledge and understanding given to them in order to understand what's really going on. Okay, and that's why it's so important for us to awake, you know, out of our sleep here at the end. Okay, and let's read that real quick from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And that's what it's talking about how the word. Mashiach was coming to give light in the darkness, okay, to undo what the, the rulers of this world have already done with the knowledge and with ignorance that they have spread, okay? So it wasn't just, you know, Mashiach just came here just to die for the sins of the world. He came to bring, bring that light, and the light might not have been always manifested until, until the end times until we get more knowledge and understanding, okay? Let's see here. Jeremiah. Hope my phone doesn't die here. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. You see that? So Babylon has actually been a tool of the Most High to leave everyone drunken so that his people can experience ignorance and be brought back from that. Okay, so Babylon is just doing what the Most High has dictated for them to do. Okay, let's read that again. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Okay, so ultimately, the Most High sent us here to experience ignorance. Now that we're being brought out of that ignorance, that's just proving the times that we are now in. We're now in the end times of the ignorance, and now we're coming into the time of light and understanding. And with that, I want to end this lesson today. I pray that this was an edifying lesson and that, um, you know, you keep trucking on and keep working hard and keep learning and keep reading and keep studying. 
All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All praise to the earthly mother, Holy Spirit, and their angels. Have a great day. Shalom.